Hi everyone, I'm Matt Shanahan with Train by Tex, and I hope you enjoy this video. Hey everyone, Matt Shanahan with Train by Tex here. I have a case study that will uh, also show you some of the features in the Pico software. This is an intermittent speedometer issue on an F-150. So let me just give you an idea what this thing is doing here. As you're driving down the road, you'll see the speedometer kind of drops out. And it does get to the point eventually where the truck, where the in, the in this truck where the speedometer drops all the way down to zero sometimes. And we have the overdrive light blinking, usually on a Ford. This is uh, indicating that you have an issue with, you know, something to do with the transmission. So we went ahead and did the code scan on the PCM here and you can see we have some vehicle speed sensor faults, intermittent code and uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at some scan data. Kind of already have an idea at this point that we're possibly looking at a you know a sensor issue but uh, we always wanted to just confirm and do some uh, due diligence make sure we don't just replace parts. So driving down the road you can see that uh, right here the speed sensor drops out and this starts to happen consistently after I drive the truck for about an hour. Here again you can see another dropout and at this time when this uh, sensor drops out on the scan tool it does on the uh, speedometer as well. Now the one thing that you have to be careful about someone already installed a differential sensor on this that's used for the uh, ABS but it's not used for vehicle speed. There's a uh, tr uh, sensor located inside the transfer case that is for vehicle speed and that's the sensor that we get this data from. So even zooming in where there, you know on the scan tool it doesn't look like there's a dropout so you know zooming in on like one of these areas here you know you can see there's some erratic uh, it's kind of an erratic signal here. So at this point I really do suspect that it's probably a bad sensor but I want to just confirm it. So I went ahead and hooked up my scope so I'm connected. You know this is just a VRS sensor so take the scope and go across uh, both wires of the sensor and this is what we kind of expect to see and this is what I get initially but at this time the vehicle's not acting up so this is kind of what we expect. After doing some you know long test drives, lots of scope and data analysis I finally found a couple cases of this and so you can see where the sensor is dropping out. So now I want to take you to a uh, live file, live Pico file. Alright so here we are at the waveform that we saved and so this is kind of like a deep record. I have 20 seconds of time on the screen so for a vehicle speed sensor you know that's a fair amount of time and you can see I have multiple frames of data that I could scroll through multiple screens. And so on, you know, a lot of scopes you might have to go through and, you know, kind of look for dropouts, zoom in. The nice thing about this Pico software is we could take this waveform and add a math channel to it. Before I do that, I'm going to change the uh, vertical scale just a little bit. Eh, maybe that's too much. Let's do one and a half. So we got a better waveform to work with here. And I want to find the dropouts easily within this pattern. So what I can do is I can go to the math channels and um, you know I have some saved in this one. This is the beta software so I got a lot more saved than the other software. But uh, for you you want to start by creating a new channel. And so we'll go to the advanced channel wizard here and we will click frequency. And then we want to measure the frequency on channel A. And so what this will allow us to do is graph out frequency and you will see it's going to make a, an easy uh, way for us to find these dropouts. So I'm going to click next. You can choose what color you want your math channel to be and then you can put kind of a range. So I'm going to put I think up to about maybe 200 Hertz and we're going to click next finish and then we're going to select the channel we just created. And should come up here. You can see below this waveform. I shouldn't have even expanded this. Let me take it back down. So 
So you can see now the black math channel is graphing frequency. And so you can see for the most part it's staying around 165 Hertz but we have these two areas here where there's a dropout so we can zoom in on that area now and take a look so you can either use this uh, zoom up here and kind of scroll around and on this deep record it easily identifies one of those dropouts for us so instead of having to go and scroll through all of this data instead of having to scroll through all this data we can just use the math channel to quickly identify the dropouts and so now you can scroll through the rest of the waveform and you can see all the different dropouts that this sensor had as we're going down the road so again you can just take if you want the little selector zoom and zoom in on one area and you can then see where the sensor is giving you a problem and you can take the math channel off once you get down if you want to look at the pattern better. So this is an easy way to find where you might have issues in your waveform and I really like using this tool along with a lot of other math channels that I've been playing around with. I really do like using these math channels. It makes my life easier. So I hope you enjoy this tip and I hope you start to use these math channels, these various math channels, especially this frequency one, in your future diagnostics. Thanks.